If you want to pass the GED science exam, you need to know what to study. In this video, I'll be sharing what you need to know about electricity to score 145 on the GED science exam and achieve your goal. This is the 10th video in a series where I'm going over what you need to know on the science exam. Like always, I'm just going to scratch the surface of this topic, but I hope it'll be helpful for you as you begin to study. In a previous video, we learned about the different types of energy. and We talked about electrical energy having to do with electrons moving between atoms. We talked about how some atoms have electrons that are only loosely attracted to their nucleus and how when they lose an electron, they become positively charged because then they have more positive protons than negative electrons. Some elements are more inclined to pick up extra electrons in order to fill their valence shells. When an atom gains an electron, it becomes negatively charged because it has more negatively charged electrons than positively charged protons. This state of being more positive or more negative is known as an electric charge. Electric charge causes objects to be either attracted to or repelled by other objects that also have an electric charge. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract. You've probably played around with this concept if you've ever used two magnets together. Sometimes when you try to put them together, they seem to push each other apart. But if you turn one of them around, then they'll stick together. The magnetic charge that causes magnets to attract or repel each other is related to the electrical charge that causes atoms to repel or attract one another. Electric current is what we call the movement of charged particles. When the current travels in one direction, that's called a direct current. When it flows back and forth, that's called an alternating current. When you turn on a lamp that's plugged into a wall, you're using alternating current. When you use a flashlight powered by a battery, you're using direct current. When you plug your phone or your laptop into a wall charger, the charger is transforming the alternating current into direct current in order to charge your device's battery. Materials that electrons flow through easily are called conductors. Examples of good conductors are metals like copper and steel. Materials that electrons cannot flow through easily are called insulators. Examples of materials that are good insulators are rubber, plastic, and glass. Other materials called semiconductors have a conductivity that's between conductor and insulator. These materials like silicon are used to make circuits in devices like cell phones and laptops and other electronics. A circuit is a complete circular pathway for the flow of an electric current. A simple circuit could include a source of electricity, like a battery, something for the electricity to flow through, like a wire, and something that is powered by the electricity, like a light bulb. A circuit may also include a switch that can be turned off in order to interrupt the flow of electricity by breaking the circuit. What's called static electricity can occur when two objects are rubbed together. Think about dragging your feet in socks on a carpet. When the objects are moved together, both objects can acquire an equal opposite charge. The atoms in your body strip away the electrons from the atoms in the carpet. So the body acquires a negative charge and the carpet acquires a positive charge. If the electron receiving item is insulated or isolated in some way, the electrons have nowhere to go. This can result in a buildup of electric charge that we call static electricity. Static is a word that means not moving. However, when you touch something that the electrons can travel through, like a doorknob, they will jump suddenly to that object as current electricity, and you will experience that as a shock. You may also notice that your hair will stand up as you approach something that you could be shocked by touching. This is because the like charges of the accumulated electrons are repelling one another. So they are traveling to the extremities or the furthest part of your body, like individual strands of hair. Lightning is also another effect of static electricity. Clouds can accumulate a buildup of electric charge when small particles of hail 
are rubbing against each other as they form and grow. The air surrounding the cloud and within the cloud is insulating the charge from being discharged. But when the buildup becomes big enough, it can overcome that insulation in order to be discharged either between the clouds or between the cloud and the ground. Okay, so that was a very quick introduction to some electricity vocabulary that will help you to do well on the GED science test. Of course, there's a lot more to learn about this topic, so I definitely recommend that you spend some time with print materials like the Kaplan GED prep book and online materials like Crash Course and Khan Academy. But remember, you're not trying to become a physics expert. You are just trying to become familiar with the vocabulary so that you can feel confident when you take the test. On this channel, I make videos about how to study more effectively so that you can achieve your goals. And coming up, I have more videos about physics, earth, and space science to finish up the GED science series. There are also videos about all three of the other subjects, so please check those out if you are studying for the GED exams. If this video was helpful for you, please press the like button. That helps YouTube to know that this is a great resource for studiers. It's your support that allows me to make these resources, so thank you as always for watching and until next time, happy studying.